What is up, parents? Welcome back to Teenager Tuesday. I'm here with none other than my Illinois friend, <laughs> Terry Kelly. He is a worship, the worship That's pastor right. here at Hope Fellowship. Go Cubs. Go Cubs. Yeah. Kind yeah. of right now. Whoever, whoever's left. We yeah. don't know anyone on the team, but no. go Cubs. And they're losing every game. <laughs> That's right. Uh, hey, so today we have, uh, first off, if you just now listen to this, uh, this is a podcast simply just to help you as parents um, walk your students through a lot of different things. But one of the things I love is getting pastors in here who can help walk them through specific pastoring things. And mm-hmm. uh, as a worship pastor, uh, we have some great questions and thoughts for you. And so uh, we have a two-part series. So we have this one, and then we have one more after this. So make sure you come back next week for that second one. But the first question is super simple. How can parents best be an example for their students in expression in expressing worship? Well, I mean... It is a great question. I think uh, for me, the, the the logical answer is actually do it, <laughs> you know, like actually yeah. worship. <laughs> okay, but I think it's it's a little deeper than <laughs> it's a that. Great stuff. Oh, hopefully, oh, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it, Nike. Bye. We're stealing your Just thing. Just do it. So now, I really think that that you know, worship is a response. So ultimately, it's it's having cultivating like a relationship with Jesus yourself. Yeah, first and foremost, and out of that, actually cultivating your worship and actually you know. Being in church, making sure your kids are like at, at uh, Hope students, huge. Because I think one, one of the things that I've found is that um, modeling worship happens kind of like it's in community. Yeah. So like when I, when I was a Christian, I became a Christian when I was 15 years old. Yeah. That happened for me. I learned how to worship not just from maybe the singers on stage, but the people around me. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, that's really the question. For like, sure. What does this mean? What does this mean? What am I? What am I singing these songs? And it was the people that I was in community with that really helped me to worship. So, as a parent, and even as a worship pastor, we're still trying to find pockets of time where we can explain this is why we worship. This is what yeah. we're doing. This is how it develops us, us spiritually. How we know God through worship. Yeah. So just doing it, talking about it, really normalizing it. Because if we're created for worship, it shouldn't be something that we do in awkward fashion or off to the side. It should be part of the center of our lives. Yeah. And I think that with with Christianity in general, like you mm-hmm. want your student to be the best Christian growing growing in God's in, in, in to what God has for him yep. or her. Like first off, as a parent, you live that out first. Um, so kind of a question that maybe maybe a parent's new to Christianity. Yeah. And they're like, I don't really understand worship myself. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm confused about worship. How do those parents um, walk their kids who might even be a step ahead of them in terms of like <laughs> they're, they're, they're on fire for God, they're dancing, they're doing all sorts of stuff during worship. How do, how do those parents, um, you know, set the stage maybe at their house, but uh, like in that expression of worship? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's always a challenge when you're learning on the fly. Yeah. You know? But I think at the same time, it's just being honest enough because honest enough and authentic enough with the conversation to not feel like you have it all figured out. That's really important. People smell that. Kids yeah. smell that big time. Um, but I think the other piece is as you are developing as a Christian, you're learning what it means to follow Christ is, is to is to really normalize it, make it like the flow of your own home. Yes. Life, right. Yeah. Like sometimes. Their kids do understand if you're one way at church and then you're one way at home, right? They do recognize that dichotomy. And, yeah. and if you can make it more authentic where, man, I worship at church, and then when I go home, there are times where, man, things may go wrong, and I just thank Jesus for it. Just take a minute. I may put my hands like this in the middle of the kitchen and go, God, you're just really awesome. No matter what's going on, you're awesome. And kids are always paying attention, right? Yeah. I love that. Normalize that expression. Um, and one thing, uh, Pastor Eric Sebastian, he, him and his family do like worship m- times at their house sure. where like those turn on worship that's something like i'm a pastor's kid i never even did that yeah. like we yeah. we that was the church thing for us <laughs> right. um even as pastor's kids yeah. um but like man him just saying setting that at an early age show as your sixth graders fifth, fifth graders sixth graders seventh graders like saying hey like worship isn't isn't just for church right. it's it's like we're here now you can find worship anywhere you're at in the car uh and if you i think as a parent if you like the worship if you play the music if you are in setting the tone in that way at home like you said um it's just it's incredible for for your students to see that uh, and they'll grab onto that for sure so yeah um, in one of our last podcasts, we talked about um, how uh, the Barna Project, they just released this big stat about teenagers. And they said 90% of students would say that the, the most in, impactful person on their life is their parent. Mm-hmm. And I think it goes hand in hand with this. Like, 
Youth pastors are awesome, obviously. Worship pastors. This guy is a legend up on stage. <laughs> They're great. But students don't care about us. That's right. Like, they like us, and they think we're cool sometimes, and we say stupid things, or we say funny things. But they are impacted and influenced by parents. And so, like, he's a great worship pastor, but your your job as a parent is mm-hmm. to teach that expression to your kids. Yeah, right. Um, and... It's his job to, to be a part of that, obviously, and to help you discover that. But um, have you had any, have you ever had, any, with your kids, have you ever had these moments of teaching them worship at home and, and maybe some tensions with that? Yeah, we've because we've kind of gone both ways where it, it's really, you know, first of all, I was just thinking about even as the worship pastor at Hope, yeah. it, it's not an automatic thing. Like, man, we just always, we're all, we're all <laughs> we sit around the table no. for dinner and we just... Our Father, thou yeah. art in it. We just start doing it, um, you know, because we're just kind of a normal family. We're all busy. I got five kids. They're all going in different directions. My wife's busy. I'm busy. Yeah. So it really is. I think more important is just to really slow down and be fully present. First of all, that's really difficult enough. But when it comes to worship thing, I've had moments where, hey guys, we're gonna turn this on Spotify. One of the Eric Sebastian moments, you know, like yeah. what you're talking about. Where we turn on the Spotify, and we're all gonna worship, and I've modeled that. But I've also just modeled it. You know, in moments of, of, man, I have one-on-one with my daughter, and we start talking about life, and it veers into church, and it veers into, and I have yeah. to learn to ask good questions. That's and a that's great, really big. That's a great thought. It's like, it isn't my job to always provide answers. It's, it's my job to create space for them to process, think, and make good decisions for themselves, because I'm not trying to create people who just have great answers. I'm, I'm really trying to help cultivate uh, students, my, all my kids are students, um, cultivate students who are good thinkers. Yeah. Who are good, who are open to God and what He wants and are able to process in the moment what it is to actually be wise. Wow. Yeah. Understanding of those things. Like, we're, it's great. Like, we talked about this in our, in our last podcast or one of our, one of our recent podcasts, but 70% of students, they don't go to church and college. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's part seems of, actually low to me. Yeah. <laughs> a part of that, a part of that is because. They they are being forced to go to church, yes. and they're not having that expression at home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But also, um, you know, they're missing out because they're not they don't have an un- understanding. So I think asking those important questions about their even about their faith, you might not understand your faith. I mean, some of you are brand new to Christianity, but ask them about their faith. You know, okay, church is awesome, church is fun. Pastor Elijah said that stupid thing; it's hilarious. Yeah. But what did God do in your life? Right. And those questions, like you said. And just discovering more about their faith. It's not that you have to be like, this is why we worship. This is why right. we raise our hands. All right? It's to live God. Like, no, you don't have to do that. But having an understanding of where they're at in their faith yeah. is a great way to, to push them. And so I think great. that's awesome. So uh, we have another one coming out, part two here, just next, right next. We're actually about to film it. You're about to listen to it next week. But I truly believe this. You can do this. You are not alone. God is with you. And so are we. We'll see you next time. Yeah.